doing in here, cutie? Watching the goddamn Jets. 70 years later. As a kid, I was into the Jets. And then I got into girls as I got older. And then I got back into the Jets because I realized there's times when a girl won't f you, but the Jets will always f you. Hey, this is Keeping It Real with their host, Justin Villa Real. And today we got to talk about the New York Jets. And I have seen a lot of sad Jet fans on the internet today after their win against the Rams, which may have cost them Trevor Lawrence, a once-in-a-generational quarterback. Now, I'm here to explain why I think that the Jets losing out on Trevor Lawrence can be a good thing. And I know a lot of people may disagree, but hear me out. With the number two pick, the Jets are in a better position than having Trevor Owens at number one because they could get Penny so well, take him from the Bengals, and then now they have the two best young offensive tackles in football, and the offensive line is arguably one of the most important positions because you an offensive line can really help a quarterback out. And if you have Becton and so well, that's going to help any future Jets quarterback out now with their 26 overall pick they need to go out and get Ronald Moore out of Purdue and add to the wide receiver core then with the 33rd pick they should get either Najim Harris the running back out of Alabama if he's not there go Chris Olave out of Ohio State and then now you have two young position players and another offensive tackle of the future that you've drafted in this draft if you're the Jets. And you bring back Sam Darnold and now you give Darnold a second chance. The reason why is if you gave Darnold weapons and an offensive line, I think he could be great. I mean, he can win you games. He won a game against the Rams when everybody counted him out. He won a game against the Rams. And that just proves to you that he's not as bad as a lot of people say he is. Adam Gase was making him look bad. And even if Darnold isn't bad, okay, we'll use this time when you don't have the number one pick to build your team, build everything but the quarterback position so that if Darnold next year proves he's not the guy, then all you need is a quarterback and you're good to go. Build everything else and then give Darnold that last chance while you are building everything else. And then either Darnold proves he's the guy and you guys are good or he doesn't and now you're just a quarterback away from success. Now in free agency, go out and sign Allen Robinson. You have the second most cap space in the NFL. Go out and get the top wide receiver. And now you'd have Denzel Mims, Ronald Moore, and Allen Robinson, potentially even Chris Olave as your wide receiving core. That's a pretty good wide receiving core. Now, Jamison Crowder in that situation is the odd man out. In the NFL draft, trade Jamison Crowder to get more picks in this year's draft so you trade away Jamison Crowder you replace him with Ronald Moore Chris Olave then in free agency you also get Allen Robinson and then now the Jets have an offense you have Beckton and Sowell you have an offensive line now you have the two tackles you need to build that interior offensive line and here's how you do that you go out and you sign interior offensive lineman Joe Tunney Alex Mack and Brandon Sheriff. Now, how you do that is you offer them one to two year deals and you pitch this idea because they're going to spend the most of your money on Allen Robinson. So with these interior offense linemen, you pitch the idea of we'll give you a one to two year deal and then you can be a free agent again very soon and get paid even more when the cap goes back up because right now it's down due to the pandemic. So you offer these three offensive linemen short deals they're going to take it, they're going to play for the Jets, and then 
either you re-sign them in one to two years or you draft their replacements in one to two years. That's what the Jets need to do with their interior offensive line. Now, the last thing the Jets have to worry about is their pass rush. Now, this is how I would fix the pass rush. Because you, again, you went out, you signed offensive linemen, and you signed Allen Robinson. So you're not going to have the money to outbid other teams in the pass rush. But that's okay. Because what you do is you scout for guys that are free agents right now that were rotational guys and did well in that rotational role. And you sign them. Reason why you're going to get them at a cheaper price, but they're going to give you really good production. They're going to play like starters, and you could get some great deals on signing them because they are seen as role players, but they could play like starters. An example of this is Brett Urban. Look what Brett Urban has done in Chicago. He's been a rotational guy, but he has been playing amazing, and he honestly could be a starter in the NFL. You sign guys like that, and then now you have a good pass rush. You've addressed your offensive line. You've added Najim Harris. If he's there, then you get your running back of the future. Allen Robinson and Ronald Moore, that's your wide receiver core. And then now, Sam Darnold, actually for the first time in his career, has an offense around him, has a team around him, and now he has the chance to be successful. He has the opportunity to be successful. The Jets are giving him a chance, and if he doesn't work out with all of that, then you go out and get a quarterback next offseason. That is what the Jets should do this offseason, and this is the end of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more sports content.